what we have here are a few of the essential parts that we're going to need to make the flute. Um, I have pre-cut the, um, the PVC pipe to approximately a couple of inches longer than what we needed. So this piece here is 18 inches and my goal is to make a G minor flute. So this will be the main flute barrel and as you can see here I've flattened it out. Another part that we're going to need is a coupling and that coupling will fit over the end like so and that little flattened piece that's going to be your airway. Okay. The next part we're going to need is um, another shorter piece of three quarter inch PVC and together with the coupling we'll, um, we'll uh, create your expansion chamber. Another a piece of equipment we need will be a, a wine cork. Uh, the reason I chose a wine cork is because it fits tightly in there. You just have to kind of manipulate it in there. And that is going to be the block. The next piece we need is a dowel. This is a 7 8 inch dowel. And this is going to be a mouthpiece. This particular dowel is made out of poplar. So poplar is a safe wood and uh, we're going to fabricate it so that when we play the flute we're not going to have to put our mouth on a plastic which a lot of people believe is not a good thing. Yeah. Okay, what we're going to do is we're going to cut the length of this cork right in half. The cork is an inch and a half long, so we'll make it three quarters. And the reason for that is I only have one cork. <laughs> I, don't, I don't drink wine, so I don't come across these things very easily. And three quarter inches will give us two of these things. We're going to use a, a box cutter to cut this in half and the reason for that is we don't want to lose any of the material. It's already short as it is so we'll take the box cutter and just make a clean cut right down the middle. It doesn't have to be perfect. And there we have our two pieces. Then we want to insert one of the pieces into the end of the barrel that has the flat spot on it. Yeah. That would just work its way in. Okay, once we get the the plug in there, um, we know that the plug is three quarter inches long, but you want to make sure because it might have compressed in there. So I gave it a few minutes to expand. As you can see, part of it came out here, so it should be ex fully expanded. Um, what you want to do is measure the inside length and compare it with the outside length so you know exactly the thickness of that thing. So a good way to do it is you get a dowel that's smaller than the opening. You stick it in there until you reach the end, like so. And then you want to make a mark. See that mark right there? Then you compare that mark to the length of the barrel. and measure that and in this case it's three quarter inches so 
what I like to do next is measure from the end of the barrel. In three quarter inches. And that will be the beginning of your sound hole, right at the edge of the, uh, the block. Then you take whatever implement you have. I have a carpenter saw here. And you want to make a line across that flat section. And you want to get it as straight as you can because um, when you go to cut that out, it's important. So what I've found is that the ideal width or length of that sound hole to be five sixteenths of an inch. Um, it's just what seemed to work better from all the uh, experiments I did. So we'll go I'm going to measure a quarter, and that way when we cut it, we can file it to get the exact, exact uh, measurement. And then we'll make another line there. And that'll be the sound hole. Now the depth of this flat spot um, is determined by trial and error. So what I did was when I made that flat spot, you can do it with a file. I had I had a plane to do this with. You put the um, you put tape over the end so that air doesn't get through, and you put the coupling over there, and then you blow on it, and see how much air will go through that hole. You don't want too much because then it'll take too much breath to play, and you don't want too little because what happens is moisture will build up in there, and after about five minutes, you're gonna have to. Um, clean the moisture out, it'll impede the sound. So, um, in this particular instance, what worked good was 3 sixteenths of an inch. So, 3 sixteenths of an inch, and you make it like 3 or 4 inches long, just long enough so that the air will pass through and not be obstructed. Okay, next thing we're going to do is we're going to take the miter saw and we want to cut the end of that cork flat with the end of the uh, pipe there. See, that's nice and flat. So now, you can put it together and kind of blow on it, see, see how you like it. This might be a little bit too tight, what I mean is not as much air as I would like is going through, but we can take care of that later just by, by sanding this down as we build the flute. Okay, now it's time to cut that sound hole out. Now, you can drill it with a drill. That'll be the easy way. But I like having a rectangular um, sound hole because um, when you go to angle the, the lip, you can do it with a flat file. Uh, the other way you're going to have to use round file or uh, a um, drill bit at an angle and um, you know that sometimes that can run away from you. Um, cutting it out like this is really hard and is dangerous so if you're not real comfortable uh, working with a sharp object um, maybe you should have someone help you or uh, just go ahead and try it with the drill. Thank you. 
as you can see it takes quite a bit of effort and you'll probably break one or two blade tips while you're at it because um, it takes some effort to get the the blade to cut through that PVC so you cut that slit all the way to the edge of the flat and then you um, you repeat the process on the other side then when you get the front and back you just cut you do the same to the side and um, Okay, now that we got it out, we're going to take a little file and try to get that, well first of all, get it as straight as we can with the knife, and then we'll take a little file and try to get it somewhat flat. So I don't know if you can see in there, but we're right at the edge of the cork over there. So that's good. So what we want to do to the underside is we want to angle it so that it creates an edge to split the air. And how we do that is we take our file. And we just kind of work at it. Trying to keep, I'm not sure of the angle, but I would say anything 45 degrees or, or less. And you check it every so often, make sure that the the underside is flat. Because the inside is round, you need to file the side more than you do the middle. Also have here a little emery board that I cut so that I can file at different rates. Then as you go, you can uh, test it, see how it sounds like, or if it even makes a sound. If you don't get a sound right off the bat, it could be that this lip in here could be blocking the ear. So what I've done in the past that helped is we cut this at an angle. That's going to be real tricky, but um, I think that's the problem that we have here.
see right there. <clears throat> and we just round it so that we don't create any dirty air. Okay, that sounds better. We can tweak it as we go along, <clears throat> but at least we got it to it makes the right tone. We want to get as much as that burr away from it. Because when the air goes through here, any bird that flutters around in there is going to create its own noise. So you gotta okay, that sounds pretty good. Okay, what we're gonna do now is we're gonna tune it to the the root note, which I'm looking for G minor. Boy, this thing is pretty close to being an F sharp. You know, I might just make an F sharp out of it. I think that's what I'll do. I'll, I'll keep this in F sharp. So how we do that is we're gonna take a little bit off the end until we get an F sharp. And if I blow it and go a little bit over, then we'll go for a G minor. Every time you cut a piece off, you gotta empty out the barrel because a lot of stuff gets stuck in there. So the root note of this flute is an F sharp. Okay, then we um, we draw a line from the center of the sound hole all the way down the barrel, a straight line, and that's going to be the line where our uh, fingering finger holes are going to be. So without making it real complicated, um, I took the measurements off of an F sharp flute 
that I had. Um, and these are the numbers. Uh, if we can write it down, <coughs> it's three and three quarter, and all measurements are from the end of the flute to the center of the first sole, three and three quarter, five and fifteen sixteenths to the center of the second hole, seven and one sixteenth to the center of the third hole, eight and seven sixteenths to the center of the fourth hole, nine and nine sixteenths to the center of the fifth hole, and ten and eleven sixteenths to the center of the sixth hole. Now, these holes aren't going to be the same uh, size. And uh, what we got to do is we got to tune each hole as we go. Yeah. So we'll mark, <coughs> we'll mark each hole first. And move on to the next step. <laughs> Okay, next we're going to take a punch, and we're going to punch the center of these holes. We do that so that the drill bit won't travel as we're trying to drill a hole in a round surface. Okay, what I like to do is I like to start with a small drill. A bit in this case it's uh, 5 sixty-fourths and I'm going to drill each of those holes um, the smaller the drill bit the more precise you can get the hole on that line so by starting with a small drill bit and working our way up Okay, now, we, now that we got the six holes in, we can make them bigger. So that it's easier to, to use a step drill. Yeah, so that bit I got there is about the size of that step drill. So once we get those holes drilled, we want to just smooth out the surface, get which I already did, and we apply painter's tape to all the holes except the first one. So the painter's tape will cover all the holes just like it would be if you had your fingers on them. And now we can concentrate on tuning the first hole. And what we do is we just increase the size of the board, the hole until we get the next note. Okay, according to wood sounds, in the F minor scale, the first hole is going to be an A. The second one will be a B. The third one will be a C sharp. The fourth one will be a, a B flat. No, I'm sorry. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the fourth one will be a B flat. The fifth one will be a E with the fourth one closed. And then the um, sixth one with the fourth one closed will be a F sharp. That's the pentatonic scale for the minor flute. 
I mean, uh, the sharp. So we're looking for an E. right there. Once we get the A, we can peel the tape back one more hole. That way we don't have to hold all the holes down with our fingers. And the next one we're looking at is a B. So we're looking for a B. We want to go in increments. You don't want to do a too big a hole because once you go past it, then it's a real big hassle. You almost got to build a new flute. Okay, there's going to come a point where you can't use the, the, this tapered bit because it'll go right through. But I say I can go another hole, so I'll do another one. Slightly under, so in that case, what I do is I <clears throat> take a corresponding drill bit. Okay, then what I do is I put on a quarter inch drill bit and then I ream it out to make it a little bit bigger. That's because we were so close, I didn't want to take a chance of going to the next size hole. Okay, then we can go to the next hole. And the next hole is a C sharp. So I got to change to a different step drill because that one is already ready to hit the other end and we still got to go bigger. So I'm going to do the same thing. <clears throat>
there. Then we'll go to the next hole. That's going to be the fourth hole. And that'll be an E flat. An E flat. To the fifth hole. Now, with the fifth hole, we got to cover the fourth hole. And we're looking for an E. Good thing I didn't, I didn't uh, drill a bigger hole. Well, that's weird. That hole is really small. I don't know why. Okay, when we do the the sixth hole, we're looking for a F sharp again, one octave higher. Mm. 